Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at EMC World 2012. This is day two for theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of EMC World, where we bring you the smartest people in the house, and we've got a longtime CUBE guest and friend, you know, one of the smartest nodes out there, Chuck Hollis, great to see you again. Hey, it's a pleasure, Dave. Always good to be on theCUBE. Yeah, Cube. well, we love having you. You're one of our favorite guests. Um, unfortunately, my colleague, John Furrier, is not here today. Oh. No, he had to fly out last night. He's not working on his tan or anything. No, 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 no. Uh, he wishes, but he's at the H-Base conference, actually. Uh, that would be a Francisco. hot conference to be at right well, now. Well, we had a lot of demand for it, so we've got uh, a simulcast going on. You can see here, if you want to watch the H-Base action, go on, uh, SiliconAngle.tv, click on the HBase link. John is there with, uh, with his uh, chief data scientist and uh, a lot of action going on. You guys are becoming a cable network for geeks. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at this. We're trying, you know. Multiple well, channels. You, you know, that whole space is just exploding and we want to cover it. Obviously, I know. we want to be here you know, It's as kind well. of funny. It's, it's like where cloud conferences were three or four years ago. I remember going to cloud conferences and the room would be full of people and how many people here work for a vendor? The whole room <laughs> would go up. Anybody here not a vendor? And that one guy would raise his arm. And I think we're going through the same thing as well here with um, HBase to do the whole big data thing. A lot of technologists are interested in this I stuff. think the difference though, Chuck, is, is, yeah. is and I've not been to the HBase conference, but mm -hmm. I expect in, in speaking to, to John and others about the conference, mm -hmm. a lot of developers, Yeah. right? A lot of hackers going, and so it's a real serious alpha geek tech show. Wow. Kind of like Hadoop world. I'd go there bit. and I would be stumped. I'd, yeah. I'd sit in one of those sessions, i go, well, I could follow it for it's five good, minutes. Not a like, lot of suits. Not a lot <laughs> of suits, even, yeah, I probably we, wouldn't do well here. We were at, we were at Sapphire last yeah. week with the, with the Cube, and there were a lot of suits uh, there. <laughs> I would expect so. You know, it's a good show. I mean, very elegant, high end. Um, now, you know, just to be clear, when we start talking about big data and analytics, there are what we would call suit shows. I think we've both been to a few of them. Yeah. And what I'm finding is, is that this is a revolution that, around big data that's not being driven by technology so much. It's being driven by business people who realize, wow, you know, there's wealth out there, there's value out there. Um, I heard a great analogy the other day around big data analytics. It's kind of like the oil rush all over again. One team goes in and does the exploration, another team puts in the drill, third team spends a bunch of money to pump it all out. And uh, I'm starting to see more shows, more attendance by business people who just want to understand what the opportunity might be in their environment. Yeah, I mean, and I think that, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you can't help but bring it back to the messaging. You guys mm. started cloud plus big data, mm -hmm. and now everybody's on that bandwagon. So, you know, props to you guys for, obviously marketing's going to be ahead of the actual you know, delivery, mm -hmm. but props to you for tra spotting those trends, mm -hmm. and you basically paved the way for the entire industry. Now, the whole transformation theme's interesting. What we've been saying about mm -hmm. this, I want to run it by you and get your feedback, mm -hmm. is so cloud is really the IT transformation, yeah. and, and the business transformation is big data. Mm -hmm. And obviously there's skill sets yeah. that have to be transformed to support both of those. Maybe it's a cloud architect, maybe it's a data scientist. Yeah. Or, right. And so that seems to be another, you know, again, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's Jeremy coming up with this stuff or what, but or you, or hats off to who's ever doing it because it's, it's spot on what we're hearing from customers in terms of the things that they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Cloud, 2012 is the year of the cloud. Big data, it's not about big data deployments, as you know, it's mm -hmm. more about what's our strategy? What should we be doing yeah, there? How are we going to make money off this Yeah, thing? what are you seeing there? So, um, I think you, you covered it really quickly. Uh, IT transformation is all about IT learning how to compete. And we meet more and more IT organizations that realize they don't have a monopoly on delivering IT services. Um, they reorg around new skills, new capabilities, and the first thing they want is a variable platform to deliver services, that's a cloud to you and me. And I would guess about 20, 25% of the customers I meet right now are actively considering investing in some sort of IT organizational transformation. So we could probably talk about that for the next five years and never run out of people to talk to. The question comes up, okay, now that I've done this, what is the killer use case that I'm going to go point this on that creates value as opposed to reduces costs? Uh, so much of what we do in IT these days is about taking existing business processes and becoming more efficient, being cost out. Big data analytics for a lot of people is a new source of wealth, a new source of value. And if you're an IT person, the fact that you could actually do something that creates a new form of value for the company you work for, that's pretty exciting. Um, I don't know if you've been following what's going on in healthcare, it's just one example. Uh, the payment strategies have changed, uh, Medicaid now has accountable care organizations. You basically, uh, a contract to pay uh, $2,000 a year to keep you healthy, if you do better, the healthcare organization gets the difference. Um, all of a sudden, they need to kind of mash all this data together and figure out what it really costs to keep you healthy, Dave, <laughs> as a managed care patient. And uh, again, you couldn't compete in this new healthcare market without some sort of predictive analytics about who you were delivering care to. 
vertical by vertical, I would say maybe five to 10% of the business leaders I meet realize there's something going on out there and they have to start realizing what it means to them and their organization. Yeah, so I want to stay on that theme of IT transformation. We just did a big mm -hmm. survey at Wikibon. We do it every now and then, we'll go out to the practitioners. It's nice, you just hang them and, you know, we have this. Everybody you know, wants to talk. We, and, yeah. and we have this base of, of practitioners that love to, you know, share well, you information. You've got a good brand so, out there. People so that's want to cool. talk to you. Right? Yeah, and yeah. so, um, and they're members, and so we, yeah, yeah. you know, we don't spam them, we don't hit them too hard, but, yeah. so we asked them, you know, which of the following best describes mm -hmm. you, where, where you are in your IT transformation. And two things stood out. You know, some people weren't really thinking about it. Some had just get started. It's, it's the range, right? But the two yeah. big vectors mm -hmm. were one, our transformation is primarily focused on infrastructure, and mm -hmm. two was, and they're about the same, about you know, mm -hmm. 25, 30 percent of the base. The second one was, really more interesting to me, is we're going hard after service catalogs and IT as mm -hmm. a service. Mm -hmm. And those are really the two vectors. And there was a lot of smatterings of mm -hmm. other things. But yeah, but it's kind of interesting. Even though they say that. Um, we asked them, okay, what do you care most about? People, process, financials, political alignment, those are the things they're dealing with. Uh, most of the business leaders and the IT leaders we talk to, they know the technology's there. Mm. They know that it's, it's capable of done, they see examples around them, and it's a very inward focused discussion of we've got to change the way that we're doing things. Yeah, it's a and business model challenge. It's a business model challenge, it's not a technological challenge. Now for us as technology vendors, I was a little sobering <laughs> to realize yeah. that we weren't kind of in the critical path for this. So uh, I'll give you an example. We created a cloud architect certification. I think you followed yeah, that. Yep, absolutely. It's been very, very popular. And people ask us, you know, why did you do that? Well, if you don't do that, the network guy will build a network cloud, the server guy will build a server cloud, the storage guy will build a storage cloud. I think we've had maybe 4,500 people do that cloud architecture certification. Uh, beginning of this year, we offered a IT as a service certification on top of it, which is basically the, he the heavy lifting around process re-engineering. Cloud's only as good as its automation, automation's only good as its processes. So we think most decent sized IT organizations will need some heavy duty, continual process re-engineering. Uh, we've had 600 people through that certification. Wow. Very, very popular stuff. Um, my goal is that we create certifications around IT marketing, IT finance, and IT HR, which is not kind of the hardcore tech that you and I have kind of grown up with in the industry. Uh, who would think there would have been uh, demand for a certification around IT human resources? IT marketing, now there's a concept, right? I yeah, mean, basically, yeah. because if you're going to become a provider of services, you got to understand it's how funny, to market those It's funny, you look at any competitive service provider knows how to do go-to-market. Yeah. <laughs> how many enterprise IT organizations have a go-to-market group? Not many. Well, you know, I still yeah. contend there's a big gap between those service providers and, and, the, and the IT as we know and love it. And I don't know if, I don't think IT has to close that gap completely mm -hmm. to compete, but there's got to be. They've got to be in the game. Yeah. They've got to be in the game. It, so, for example, our own IT organization did a transformation, and I get a rate card for the services I consume. Here's the services from my IT guys, here's what it might look like from Rackspace, here's what it might look like from Caremark. Um, I don't think my IT guys are always the cheapest, but they're in the game. <laughs> Yeah, right. they're, they're in the game. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and they know my business, And they're part right? of the family, right? Yeah, they're part of the family. So, okay, so you yeah, give, the, yeah. give them the hometown, uh, yeah. you'll take the hometown, town, not discount, it's uh, you know, the well, home the hometown, hometown service premium. service providers know nothing about EMC, our business, right. how we work, what's important to us. Right. My IT organization does, and as a consumer of IT services, you know, it's worth something to me. So right? they can bring additional yeah. value that a potentially yeah. an outsider can't. Yeah. The other thing I want to talk to you about is, is value. Uh, mm -hmm. So everybody talks about, I think, it's, I think it was Gartner who came up with the three V's of, of big Help data. Help me here, oh was, yeah, velocity, Gartner, velocity, variety, yeah. and volume. Okay, it, velocity, variety, volume, yeah, got it. Yeah, volume, you know, yeah. how big, variety, mm -hmm. the, yep. the texture, and velocity, the speed. And those mm -hmm. are good, mm -hmm. I like that. Everybody's talking about, there's a fourth V, I think, which is value. And, and we, again, out of the survey that we did, we asked people, what's the biggest challenge you have with big data? And they said, it's understanding how to monetize and get value. You know, it's, it's kind of funny, I, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but you, know, you have information on the balance sheet, how do you monetize that? Um, we all kind of are familiar with MBA curriculum, we know how to price assets and brand and goodwill. What if you're sitting on petabytes of interesting information? And I don't think there's a good intellectual framework out there for saying, well, what's the potential of that? That being said, we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs and larger organizations who say, that's okay, I don't have to wait for the ROI, I'm going to go figure out what's, what's happening in this space already and willing to make the investment. But I don't think there's any coursework you can go through that will teach you how to value that information portfolio. Yeah, and I guess it's going to be experience, right? That'll, mm -hmm. that'll be the reference model and people will start to actually put, put numbers around them yeah. and then we'll have the uh, reference to be able to- there's actually perform, a problem but. after that. So we're now seeing this in larger organizations that have invested in the predictive analytics and there's these classic meetings that are happening where conventional wisdom meets cold, hard logic. 
So the scenario is the data science got, says, goes out, finds this great predictive model, goes into a room of people who think they know what the answer is, and the interactions between these people, and we call this you know, the three phases of, of data science denial. Phase one is your data sucks. Uh, the second phase is your model sucks. And the third phase, if those don't work, is you suck. Yeah. And yeah. there's kind of a, a human interaction dynamic because these guys are showing with such powerful predictive capabilities that a lot of people feel threatened by. <laughs> so there's a dissonance the, there. Oh, there's a very harsh dissonance going on. You know, I think that's perceptive. So the other thing that we, we, mm -hmm. we asked for that in the survey, mm -hmm. and it, it didn't come up as a big problem, and I mm -hmm. think the reason is because nobody's there yet. They, okay, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. At, they're at, your data sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. they're going to find that that is yeah. going to become a real organizational challenge. But you know, take a, a marketing organization, I'm not picking on ours, I'm just one at random, and you know, everybody knows how marketing works and what market is. The data science professional comes in and says, here's mathematical proof, you're doing it all wrong and wasting the company's money. That's not going to be a popular meeting. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're kicking butt, you know? Yeah, we feel good about ourselves. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, um, so what do you do here at the show? I mean, you, you, how uh, do you spend your time? Um, the big thing for me um, this year is we're running our first partner-centric events. And we're having our global partner summit, so we have service providers here, we have SIs here, we have resellers. Um, I forget what the number is, but I think uh, Sunday we had 2,000 people. Started in the Sunday, room. right? Yes. Sunday. And for me, you know, I've been here a long time. I really like to watch the company evolve. I am so glad that we're bringing our partners together in one place and one time to not only present to them, but to listen to them. And uh, you'll hear from Joe, you'll hear from Pat, you'll hear from us for leadership. We are fundamentally changing our go-to-market around partner centricity. So you'll see less and less emphasis on the traditional EMC direct sales force that we all know yeah. and love, um, that we both kind of grew up with, and more around partner enablement. And the sessions I'm running with them are interesting. Hey guys, here's where we see the opportunity. Here's what we're investing to get after it. If you want to invest in it too, and by the way, it's your choice, here are the kinds of things that we think you ought to be doing that we're doing in our own That business. we're going to value. That we're going to value. Right? And by the way, if you do those yeah. things, man, we're going to put you right in front of the yeah. engagement in front of our customers. And for me, it's not the usual partner vendor dance. We're actually talking as business people about how do we all capitalize on this wave of opportunity that's coming down the road and how can we make our mutual customers more successful. Yeah, I think that, um, well, you've learned a lot, I think, from, from VMware. And you go mm -hmm. to the VMworld you know, conference and you just see the ecosystem. It's all about the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that message is coming through. There's a vacuum now mm -hmm. in terms of the large companies. And Joe calls you guys the small of the big. Yeah, the, a, yeah, the littlest big company Yeah, there there's is. a vacuum in terms yeah. of you know, the partner friendliness. And you guys have obviously done some really interesting things with Cisco. To me, what strikes me this year, mm -hmm. and I was just at Sapphire last week, is the, the, the the emerging partnership with SAP. Mm -hmm. I think that's really smart. Um, and it's more than just a, you know, enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, that doesn't hurt. <laughs> you know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. And that's maybe how it started. Yeah. Hey, we should be maybe talking to SAP. But, what are they all about? Um, I think SAP as a company is starting to realize that infrastructure was getting in the way of their value proposition. Yeah, yeah. Always had great software, great business process, great capabilities, but all had to kind of run somewhere. Expensive and slow. So, and hard to yeah, change and, and difficult and needed to be secure. Boy, what protected. if we could virtualize that? And yeah. you know, it's very easy if you're a software vendor to sit there and say, well, that's the hardware guy's problem. But the customers have to have both value propositions coming together in a way they can consume. So I think that's true for SAP. I think it's true for a lot of the larger software vendors. Um, so I'm getting more calls from, and I won't mention any names, classic software vendors that kind of look and say, you know, our model is kind of done. No longer can I sell the license, hand it over to the native IT guys and run. I've got to think about more variable consumption models. Um, I think I need to deliver as a cloud. I don't want to be a cloud provider. Do you have any good service providers that you can hook us up with? So when we go to our customer and we sell our value proposition, we can sell it in classic or by the SIP. And I think we're going to see a lot of that from the ISVs here in the next two or three years. Yeah, the other, um, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. let's just stay on partners for a minute. You were very instrumental in the original uh, VCE sort of positioning and marketing and strategy. Oh, it was a blast. Um, there was a bunch of us who were very, very passionate about it at the outset. I go back to some of the blogs you wrote back then. When you, when you guys launched VCE and you basically explained the whole sea change mm -hmm. that was coming around. So I'm sure you're very proud of that and congratulations because it's but It was a long slog, changing people's perception. Yeah, because out of the shoot it was like, hmm. You know, I don't know if about? I like this. Yeah, yeah, what is it all about? Then, I've never seen anything like this before. How is it different? It was like the middle of last year then things really started yeah. taking off. Yeah. And then, of course, EMC, it's getting so large that EMC had to sneak in its 10K. 
some data. Yeah, we couldn't that, hide it in the... That we analyzed. <laughs> and some, and, and no, you I've never see seen you do that before, I don't and know. And so it was, <laughs> you know, it was enlightening. Yeah. And then you saw the V-Specs announcement mm -hmm. a couple months ago, mm -hmm. um, which opens up a whole new set of partners. You know what the best part about V-Specs is? Partner branding. And um, what I, um, let me see if I can get this adjusted correctly here. Um, as I was, was kind of pitching the idea to some of our partners, we kind of went through what we want to do, their choice of components, we'll take all the infrastructure heavy lifting out. And the one thing they all said is, and we can put our name on it. And I think this is the first time we have created branded products for our larger partners. And it doesn't really, it's not apparent that that's kind of what partners want. But if you think about it from a reseller or integrator's point of view, they spend their whole, whole life selling things with other people's names on it. And they're saying, wow, you know, I can actually get behind this thing, this is mine. I thought that right? was a pretty cool move. Yeah, you know, yeah Let's talk yeah. about that a little bit, because I was the day before the yeah. V-Specs announcement, I was in New York City, yeah. meeting with the IBM folks on their integrated systems. Pure whatever it is. Yeah, pure systems, pure, systems, pure flex, yeah. there's yeah, some yeah. cool stuff going yeah. on there. But I asked Steve Mills, who I have a great deal of respect he, Yeah, uh, he's a pretty for. good guy. I don't know if you know him. He's, I guess he's, I do. He's, he's both a, a, an alpha geek and a great yeah. business guy. So I asked him, I said, what about the brand? You know, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the brand? What, what, what yeah, does that what mean for And he said, the brand is the brand. You've seen the brand. It's IBM. Yeah. Boom. Period. The end. And that works for them. And I said, all right, that's By the way, smart. For if IBM. I had IBM's brand, <laughs> yeah. I'd probably feel right. the same way too. <laughs> and then I asked Jeremy about it, and he said, yeah, we have a different philosophy. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I asked some of the, the 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 partners, and they said, hey, we'd love the vanity of having our name up there. So, two different worlds. You know? Yeah. Uh -huh. By the way, there's nothing wrong. I mean, I love the architecture, I love the packaging, I love the value proposition. But you know, it's one thing to say that you're partner centric. It's another thing to take, kind of put their name on your product and your value proposition. Um, I would like to see us do more branded products for our customers going forward. Um, some of our partners have at least as much value proposition in front of their customers as any IT vendor would. And I look at it as a power shift um, from you know, oh, HP or Cisco or EMC on it is no, I buy from Partner X. This is the brand that I recognize with. So I think you're going to see more of that. Chuck, I want to uh, switch gears and ask about mobility. Again, mm -hmm. Sapphire last week, big emphasis on mobility. Obviously mm -hmm. in memory, but mobility was a huge theme. Uh, Bill McDermott told us that he, uh, he basically bought 3,000 iPads mm -hmm. um, uh, early on. And Jobs called him up and said, what are you doing? Why are you buying He should man things? up. How many employees he was, does he have? I know, right. <laughs> well, this was like, was like a I week was pretty radical at the time. And so, and Jobs called him, why, it doesn't have a printer? No, we don't want that. And so they're really transforming the mm -hmm. company. So my question to you is, how do you participate, how does EMC participate in, in mobility? What does mm -hmm. it all mean to you? I know this is the whole VDI thing or end user computing, and obviously that's, a, that's an angle. You can back end storage for a lot of you know, mobile stuff, mm -hmm. but what does it specifically mean for you well, guys? Well, here's where we both would agree. Um, we're not thinking desktop anymore, yeah. we're thinking mobility. And by mobility, yes, it's nice to think about bringing the legacy environment forward with VDI and make it on an iPad, but that's just kind of a stepping stone to those native mobile applications that we all want right. and love. So I can't lay out the whole strategy, but you saw a piece in an announcement uh, yesterday with Simplicity. Yeah. Um, okay, we know there's going to be content consumed and content generated on the edge. You're going to know that it's going to want to be enterprise and corporately managed, so it's pretty easy to see how Simplicity would fit into a broader storage to bring some of our value propositions. Uh, one of our earlier value propositions was around security, and that continues to it. I've got to secure the endpoint, I've got to secure the information in and out of it. RSA's been doing that as well. Uh, VMware has been working very heavily on their Horizon environment to create kind of an easy to consume enterprise app store. Um, I wouldn't put all those pieces and say, yes, we've got it nailed, but you can start us to see quietly, if you look, the pieces we're putting together. I can sketch out what the end state looks like. We would like to be able to go to a large enterprise and say, here's a platform for mobilizing your employees, your partners, and your workforce. Um, we will let IT empower anybody in the business to build lightweight apps that you can push on an app store, secure, manage, just like you do in a desktop and today. And if you do a B2C model, you could use the same capabilities to go off and reach your customers. Part of that's around app development. You saw us pick up a little company called Pivotal Labs. Uh, that's very good Great at agile, Love it. agile yeah. mobile apps. Okay, well we're going to need some skills of that. So I don't want to sketch out the next five steps, but you know we're always a company that loves to invest in the transitions. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's this great quote on the screen that the Kapina of is EMC is a company that uh, sells disruption. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm okay with that. I really am it, on a personal level. And in that scenario, <laughs> that end state, you'd sell solutions, hardware, software, service solutions. 
to that um, problem? Is that right now we're ingredients and with professional services. But I'll give you an example. Uh, within our own IT organization, they're standing up an enterprise mobility platform. I, as business user, can go to it, either bring my own developer or hire one of theirs, create some apps for my part of the business. They've got the infrastructure that publishes the data source, it's wrapped in security, they've got an app store. Uh, we haven't quite productized that yet, but we think that most enterprises want to crank out mobile apps for their workforce and their partners, just like we crank out you know, .NET applications of years ago. A um, little early from a big message perspective and pushing our customers there, but I don't think we're any different than any other IT vendor. We know that it's a mobile world. I mean, Bill McDermott said it at SAP. Um, we have, I, I like what we got. I think we got a little more we got to go do. Yeah, okay, and um, unfortunately we're out of time. I wanted, to get, I wanted to get into developers with you. It flies by, Chuck, when we, when we sit down. We always have so much fun you know, here. The yeah. whole developer <laughs> land grab is really fascinating. Maybe we can pick that up at a, you know, some other time. Yeah. Maybe at, at, the, at VMworld, maybe Actually, that's, that's the right place between Cloud Foundry and everything they're yeah, doing. Yeah, really yeah, cool yeah. stuff going on. How about uh, Area 51? There's this thing that Jeremy's got going. What's that all about? I'm I mean, sworn have to Have you silence. been in there? I mean, I'm have sworn you, to have you seen it? Um, <laughs> I am not going to let any beings fall. This you is can't even tell me if you've been in there? I mean. Well, no, it, it was created for the show. Yeah. I mean, I looked around it, but there's been a lot of discussion about what's going on there. I'm saying if you can get a ticket to Area 51, get in there, it's going to be fun. It's going to yeah. be a fun show indeed. Cool. All right, good. Chuck Hollis, thanks very much for thanks coming. Thanks so much for inviting me. Always a pleasure. Always All right, a pleasure. everybody, keep it right there. We'll be right back after this word. Thank you.